Rays and uh, Lasers and 29ers and a couple of Wasps as well. So all able to jump on a plane once that becomes possible and get out here and get having some uh, fun and games. Uh, so, uh, and for Pete's benefit, dinghycoach.com. to have a look at because they may be getting some errors in in due course so um i've shared a screen uh and tony hopefully you're recording i think you are uh, so <clears throat> what it takes to win um my name's hugh styles i'm an olympic coach and i've been coaching at elite level for 20 odd years um the last 10 of which have been helping olympic sailors try and be successful at uh, multiple olympic games um and uh first couple of pictures on this slide were really just trying to just sort of um, provide a little bit of uh, a bit of opportunity that we might be discussing as we go through this. So <clears throat> who's the guy on the top left? Answers on a postcard. First one in the chat gets a prize. Who is the top left person? It's quite current. Yay, Yannick Besthaven. So the man who stopped in the middle of the southern part of the way through the southern ocean took six years six hours of time trying to help somebody get rescued from their broken boat and still came through to win the vendee globe um pretty incredible feat uh 80 odd uh 80 odd days to get around the planet and um six boats all finishing within um within a few hours absolutely incredible um, and obviously we all know who, who this is and what's going on at the moment. Um, but there's an opportunity that, uh, that the Ineos boat needs to, uh, make good of in the next couple of, uh, occasions they go racing. <laughs> yeah. Mars pass of Gary Stones. Yes. Very good. Well done, Tony. Uh, so, so yeah, so, um, plenty of current examples of, of, of that. And I thought I'd just start off with a little video of when it was that the last occasion we saw these guys doing well. No sound, Hugh. Not going to no that, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, okay. Not sure. We'll just um, we'll just fast track that to, to get onto the next slide. So I was just basically showing the opportunity that happened for the British, you know. It was, as everybody's probably seen, it was nine, <clears throat> it was nine crosses. And really the key one, was was this one here you know as everybody's seen um it came down to the fact that there was a port starboard with a couple of hundred meters to go to the finish <clears throat> and uh and and that's the margins of error that those guys are working at um to try and win races uh and for us when we're thinking about what we do um the um the significance of uh, of, of what we do is is no less has no less gravitas but the magnitude of how fast they're going is pretty crazy at combined speeds of what was it 80 uh 70 odd knots when they're coming down when they um coming together so um i just thought that was a nice little nice little way of starting us off um so <clears throat> winning is a decision um, um and winning is a way of uh, a way that some people like ben ainsley um and the picture top left, Michael Phelps, um, have managed to define themselves over the course of their careers. Um, why do I like the picture on the top left? Gareth, why do I like the picture on the top left? Because uh, the guy in seconds looking at the guy in the lead. Yeah, you know, most of the time we end up being in situations where for a lion's share of what we do, we're copying. To learn technique, copy, to learn and, and develop opportunities to, to see what other people have done and improve. But really when it comes down to winning, um, winners don't take their eye off the ball and they focus hard, hard, hard on what they do best and keeping doing that. Um, they sail well. They do the simple things super, super well. 
And that's one of the things that uh, I'm keen to advocate to everybody on the call tonight is it's really, really important that you base all of what your future winning um, is defined by, by simple processes and simple steps that together then become bigger um, opportunities and then help you deliver on your goals. Um, they, they sell conservatively and it's about not making mistakes. And what have we started seeing happening in the, um, in the, in the INEOS campaign? Any thoughts? What have we seen from the guys in Ineos on the chat or whatever? Well, if I start and try and help, I've started seeing their starts being a little bit less predictable. And Dave, Dave said unfor unforced errors. Yeah, they've started to not stick to their routines. In that last start, I don't know if you saw it the other day, but Ben and uh, Giles, there was communication from Giles Scott in the last start. Yeah, time too hard, suddenly got twitchy. Yeah, great, good answers. Yeah, they suddenly started feeling the pressure. They suddenly, suddenly started doing things that, you know, Ben in that last start was trying to hook the Italians the last time, wasn't he? And what was the communication from Giles? Giles was like, 30 seconds, 10 seconds and you know if, you know we don't need to push anymore we don't need to hook them again and, and Ben went for the next hook so all traits of of the pressure starting to impact and starting to mean that the normal routines and the normal habits that have formed them so well are uh, are, are becoming um hijacked by emotions and, and a want to try and or um dominate a position um, and not on just the simple routines. Um, so give me an example. So in your sailing, um, in your sailing in, in Limington, um, when might it be that you, um, you have had a situation where you've, uh, you know what to do um, and you've ended up not delivering that because, um, because you got all a bit too excited or a bit too enthusiastic. Somebody must have had a, a uh, 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 coming into a start boat um, incident or whatever, where they just thought, oh, I can just sneak in there and then forgot that the tide has taken them onto it or they've just tried to dive in at a mark and the tide's just taken onto the mark. Team Hugh, Natural? Hugh, I can, I can come in there. Um, I like, it, it always, when I get overly competitive, I start making poor decisions. So like, I don't know, it's kind of an ego, I get, you know, I don't know, I'm sure I can win the, win the pin or I can win the committee boat or, um, you know, I, I end up, I win the pin and then decide that I can cross the fleet on port just because I think I can. And I'll have a whirl at it and, and, and miss a toe strap and, you know, it's, um, it, it all, it's all um, uh, kind of, um, you know um, suicide and i do it to myself you know so yeah and henry has just uh just said him i saying trying to sail above the above a lobster pot boy and then getting hung up on it i mean how easy is it to do that those little black boys they hang around off the little the little mud flats and stuff and we do it time after time oh, i can just I can, you know, and as soon as i have this great say oh, i have it great but i have a saying is you know i hope never gets better and uh, and and you know i'm all my olympic uh yeah, tired tweak down to it. Yeah, yeah. I hope never gets better. So as soon as you start hearing yourself say I hope, you really are looking uh, looking for something that's pretty unlikely to happen. So yeah, I'm just trying to really define right now what we see as the behaviours and the opportunities that that winners that is displaying. Obviously, Mr. Good, good, good on anybody. Um, and, and some of the behaviors that they display are, are, are listed down on the left. And, and I suppose the, the, the interesting thing about them actually is, is probably the second point from the bottom, which is, you know, however obsessive or determined or ruthless, or whatever, the thing that makes these guys, him and, and, the, and the other people that I've had the pleasure to work with in the past, um, be able to serially win is their hard work ethic. Um, and their hard work ethic is something that is just um, is is part of their DNA, you know. And 
And if you look at this, I assume everybody's heard of Michael Jordan. Um, and I just love the quote um, that, that I've pictured there. You know, I failed over and over in my life and that's why I succeed. And, and I suppose that's the, that's the piece that I'm really interested in, in coaching people and helping them uh, improve and, and uh, get to that peak performance they want to get to. So um, when we think about that, then, you know, the key pieces in, in what these guys and how successful people operate is around being goal driven, the planning, the methodical, the hardworking, you know, and being prepared to push all kind of comes out well in that attention to technical detail. And that's kind of what um, that's helping us nicely sort of for me set the scene now. Um, so I've got a little bit of work for you guys. Um, and um, part and parcel of this talk when I spoke to Tony was to try and help understand uh, what technical talks look like and what you guys would be interested in. Um, it's all it's all fair well and good um, me talking about things that I've done, but actually the really the real key way of trying to help bring this to life is to take some of your examples and bring them to life. Um, so what I'm proposing to do for the rest of the talk is to to work through a couple of pieces on this win winning process. Um, so this is the process that um, that actually Dave Dave Ellis and Carl Thorne uh, and I have been working through in in their hunt to win Scorpion National Championships. Um, and tonight um, we're going to do two things. We're going to have a little bit of a look at this performance goal opportunity and this is where you guys need to do a little bit of work um, and then once we've done a little bit of looking at that then that helps us then uh, identify this a little more uh, insights into what it takes to win um, so in the next in the next few slides you're going to be asked to do a bit of bit of help and, and assistance and provide some feedback so i hope that's okay and we'll use the chat to do that um, but please please do interact because this is where I'm trying to help make sure I add value to you guys. And this is where we'll, uh, we'll really succeed in this talk by making it nice and interactive. Um, so um, in this talk, um, this is an example of a, what we call a what it takes to win um, planning document. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, briefly run through the kind of the setup of it. Um, and I'm not intending to go through all the details, but I'm going to just focus on kind of three areas, sort of this bit here, this bit here, uh, this bit there, and this bit here. And, and it's to, the aim of this is to try and give you an idea about the level of detail that you can go into when you're trying to work out how to put together a campaign to be successful. Um, so this is an example of a... Um, of what it takes to win for an Olympic team that I was working with a couple of years ago. Um, and we had Olympic trials. And so the key piece around this was trying to help make sure that we had a really clear goal uh, that we were working to. And when I say a really clear goal, then that was dictated by, you know, effectively for us as about winning the British trials to um, get to go to the Olympics. Um, and so we then said, okay, well, what does that actually mean? Well, for us, it was, you know, lowest point score over 33 races, two events, two medal races. Um, and that, and the way that we were going to do that was by being the top boat. And we estimated that that would mean top five finishes. And then at the two, um, at the two qualification events to be selected. And then actually it turned out that we had a third event, the test event. Um, and then, so as we go down the, down the, the model it's then okay, well, in order, if we want to win that and we need to achieve these results, then what do we need to do? Um, and obviously in Olympic world, then we got some stats and some detail and some, um, some past history, which allows us to then start to create some of our own KPIs and work out where we need to have our super strength. Um, and you know, we flagged up, you know, needing to finish in a top three, an average of X 5.5 per race um, at that regatta, and then you know, a different one in a different venue, and then you know, some other important considerations in Tokyo. Um, why do we bother doing this, you might say? Well, it's to try and then help us be really clear on what it is that we need as, as 
unique selling points or as key skills as we go forwards. And as you see down the bottom, we then break that down in areas which allow us to then work on the small little chunks of skill development, which then when it pulls together, allow us and provide us the, the capacity to win events and win trials. So I realize that's a really quick view, but this is what we're just gonna run through an outline of with you guys. Um, and um, my plan is, oops, there we go. Let's just flick onto the next one. So what is your performance goal? All right, so this is where we need your input. Um, and, uh, and Tony, if you wouldn't mind, could you just keep an eye on uh, um, what people say on the chat? And, and I'll keep an eye on the chat, but it's, it's, it's good. So can, can each of the people who want some feedback put down in the chat what it is is your performance goal? So when I say performance goal, that doesn't have to be the Ben Ainsley winning gold medal or the Usain Bolt winning multiple medals. It could be learning to be better at um, understand at your tacking or it could be learning to be better at dealing with pressure when it is you're sailing in tide and you're coming up to the committee boat um, in Lymington. Um, it doesn't matter we still can apply the same approach and the same thinking game to try and help bring improved performance. So in the chat okay so Henry says improve my nationals performance Okay, cool, great. And um, in what boat, Henry? Team Phantom. Natural Win, sorry? Phantom. Phantom, okay. Cool, all right. Okay, Henry Nationals. Uh, and uh, Phantom. Dave, win the Wednesday evening series. Rory, improve big fleet midline starts. Okay. Top Catherine, top 10 lady at the Scorp Nationals. Okay, great. This is awesome, guys. Thank you. Consistently top 20 at the aero event, Simon. Okay, cool. Learning to turn down the imposter syndrome. Ooh. <laughs> um, Perfect. Right. Good. Okay. So, um, seeing as you guys have offered, uh, then um, how about we? Um, how about work work through one of the scenarios for one of the scenarios to start with? Um, so, seeing as Henry was first, shall we try and work through what it takes to win for Henry? Yeah. Cool. Right. So, um, and it's really really valuable if everybody can help interact. Okay. So, don't be afraid. Um, take your microphones off. And, and please make sure you contribute, yeah? So we're gonna just run through. Um, uh, the first thing is about making sure we all understand how we're gonna go about doing this. And, and this comes from making sure we all understand what goals are. Now, you know, you're all intelligent people, but I just thought it was important for us to clarify. So when, when we talk about goals, then I'm talking about SMART goals. So SMART goals are specific, yeah? They are accurately going to help us progress and provide an opportunity for us to progress each time we engage in one. So a, a SMART goal, is, uh, give me, a, so Pete, give me an example of a SMART goal before you run off to go and get another beer. A specific goal. You're in mute. To lead at the first mark. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's very specific. It's measurable. Yeah. There's a target. Only Pete knows if it's achievable. Um, it needs to be a realistic. And we need a little bit of a time factor in there. So how might we phrase that slightly differently for us to make sure that it's kind of got that time frame bit? part of it how might we change that up a little break it down into smaller bits yeah cool okay so we might start off by saying right how do i lead at the first mark okay well so that might be by breaking into something around starting something around upwind speed yeah 
So that could be a big goal that we're trying to achieve. That could be our yeah. big, big picture goal. But That's in our process way. to get there, we need to have little steps to go to get there. Okay, right. So that's a little example. So in order to try and do um, what we're going to do with Henry, then Henry, we're going to need to answer some questions. Okay. Okay. So um, in your in your um, nationals, improving a result. Um, what is the key performance question? That we need to answer now i've given you a little a, some options here but these don't have to be what stay don't, don't have to be what stay in this example um oops two seconds gone <coughs> and so sorry. so henry what what would be one of the performance questions that would help you achieve your nationals improvement uh, uh, consistently starting better. Okay. If that makes sense. I can, I can start very well or very poorly. I can't put a string of... Come on over dinner. We keep saying the word gold. If we chosen win, winning or winner, we'd be late by now. Hello, Pete. Hang on, Pete. Uh, right. So Henry, you were saying you were saying starting better. You can start. It's the consistency. Yeah. Okay. Get, getting away in the front row every time to give myself a chance to be in the mix at the first mark. Okay. Um, so Dave, um, as soon as you're on the call and you're um, Dave uh, Dave Ellis, um, is what 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 questions do you want to ask Henry about how to make that more specific? Yeah, so I'd ask Henry what his process is on the lead up to the start to determine what the favoured end was, what the favoured side of the course is, what he feels the big picture is going up the first beat. Um, is it a day that's uh, very predictable or is it a day that's unpredictable? Because if it's a day that's very predictable, you probably need a, a better start. Um, so you might need to push harder. If it's a day that's got lots of opportunities in it, you might decide that you can get a good start. But you don't have to win the start because there's going to be plenty of chances for you to, to, pop, to pop through if you make, pick the right opportunities. So I think it's what's the process to the decision making to where he's going to start and what what is he going through? What are the steps and what's the thinking that he's going through? And when does that start? Does that start when he rocks up at the start line? Or does that start when he wakes up in the morning, you know? Great. That's good. Thanks, Dave. That was really interesting. So what I'm hearing from Henry with a little bit of clarification from Dave is, you know, what's the performance question? The performance question is, is you know, how do I make more consistent starts? Yeah. Yes. Being in front row off the start. Is that fair, Henry? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we'd probably pop in our performance group. How do I make more starts to provide me the opportunity to be in the front row off the start line? Yeah. 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 Okay. So if we go down and, and, and the way this works is we are, okay, that's what we're trying to achieve. A start routine that means that I can consistently be in the front row as I come off the starting line. So how, how do we know that how do we know that we've done that and how do we track pro, the progress on this? How would we how would we be able to check in with this? Uh, do you mean it second. like um, actually at the event itself or like leading up to the event? In, in the leading up to the event. So how are we going to make sure that we can deliver relative to this goal? What okay. would so be I don't, a good I don't way? Really... I don't really travel much with the Phantom at the moment. Um, well, I don't travel at all with the Phantom at the moment. But, <laughs> um, uh, you know, persistently um, succeeding in club racing. So, you know, if I'm if I'm in the first couple of boats, depending, I don't know what the fleet splits are, but I used to judge myself against the Merlins. If I could beat the Merlins around the windward <laughs> mark, then I knew I was doing okay kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So you've got um, uh, regular opportunity. So we, in answer to this question, we know if we've succeeded, if you could um, be in the front row with the Merlins regularly off the start line in, a, in, in, in three out of four um, Wednesday evening races a month. 
Would that be fair? Yeah. Yeah. And that then gives us a capacity to then track. So, okay, my goal for this starting process is to make sure that I can aim to do training and some practice in order to be able to be in the front row with the Merlins and say Nigel King and the other guys at Phantom Sailing, how far off the start line? How, how, how important is it? Um, is it a hundred meters off the start line? Is it half a mile off the start line? You know, what, what's the, what's the important factor here? Uh, how do you mean? What, like, wh when, when is the, where's, where's the kind of sweet spot of I've done, I've done what I tried to achieve? Yes. Yeah. What would you be <laughs> satisfied with? Um, well, I guess it's, uh, I mean, if it's off the start line, the whole point is trying to get to the windward mark first. What, you know, and that's, uh, I guess that's the, I'm trying to think. Um, Maybe Lau can just provide a little help for you. So would it be a good start if it was you could tack, and tack on the first shift? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. or the first decision point. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe this the answer in this piece is mm, we know we've succeeded if in three out of four Wednesdays a month I've managed to start, hold a lane and tack on the first decision point that I want to tack on as I go up the beat. Yeah. 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 And so that also is answering how do we track progress? Because we've said three out of four times a month we can do that. So as we kind of continue on down here, so what do we, what Henry, what does Henry, and, and, and you know, whilst Henry can stop having to do the thinking now, um, thrown out to the masses, what does Henry need in order to achieve this? What does Henry need to do for him to be able to deliver this? How can we help him devise a way of improving his possibility to do this? And Maybe, Alex, maybe you could just let um, somebody else have a go. I can see you champing at the bit there, but maybe there's an opportunity for somebody else to comment. Anyone else? Yeah, Hugh, Hugh I'll come in there. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd say um, I really like the goal about um, uh, being able to tack, you know, or, uh, at the first decision point, uh, um, three out of four races. Um, but I'd say, you know, you need a, like a, a way, a real tangible way of recording that. So that you you know you, you really track it, um, so that <clears throat> I guess as, as much as anything you can give yourself credit for when you start achieving it, right? Because you know momentum is really important, and when you start nailing it, you, you'll you'll you know feel like you're getting somewhere, and you'll puff your chest out and go faster, you know. And it's, you know, confidence breeds confidence, doesn't it? So some sort yeah. of really robust system which will allow you to record it, maybe in the boat, maybe you've got a China Grow pen, and you're just putting a tally. <laughs> On the whole somewhere you know at least yeah yeah measurement is really key in, in in how we achieve and start to learn how to win trying to keep track of how you've done is really important you know some people are happy and keen to write some little notes you know after they've been sailing about what they did and how that made that happen um and i, and I just and i'll ask the question again maybe dave ellis can pop in here so, Dave, what would you be doing? What would you be thinking of for Henry in order to achieve the goal that we've set out? What what component parts would help? What can we? How can we break the goal of three out of four and able to tag? What would that look like? What What are the component bits that make that up? I think I think Henry needs to look at what what he's doing at the moment um, from the point he's getting ready to go out sailing to the point that he's getting to the course to the point that he's um, sussing out the line, what, what, what's the process he's going through to make that decision for the day as to where he's starting on the line and where he wants to be on the first third of the beat, the second third of the beat and the third third of the beat um, and to have a plan that he can implement. Because if you, I think it's really what I'm learning for this process is that actually the most Fundamentally, you need to agree in your own brain or with your teammate, if you're two-handed, what your what your plan is for that start and that race and that you both check in on that plan, agree that plan. And of course, plans can alter because uh, winds change, etc. But it's really important to have a, an agreeable plan that you can execute. 
And that's measurable as well, because you can always go back and say, well, firstly, did we actually execute what we agreed we were going to do? You know, that's. Yeah. Uh, nice. Nice. So having a plan, really important. Um, as I'd said, mentioned in the slides a little bit earlier, you know, what is the plan? The day, the little situation on the start line. You know, so usually in your start, um, in your start process, then we're trying to practice and train in order to have, you've got a plan A, but you probably also need to have a plan B. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so plan A might be, I want to start the pin and go left. I always plan use plan B. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So now that's interesting, right? So I always use plan B. Okay. So what, what would help you be able to deliver your ta plan A? So I have, I have actually done some work on this uh, cool. and, and taped to the front of my boat just above the, the, uh, the um, chartlet that we have to find our way around. I've got a, 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 a piece of paper with uh, written on it, uh, tide, bias, um, uh, time, and... Yeah. Um, uh, something else something else yeah <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise otherwise i just sail out there and sail around in a circle and like oh the windward marks up there oh, oh yeah okay and so yeah. i had that on there to make me think i look at it and i think oh yeah i need to check the bars to the line i need to check where the tide's going transit that was the other thing i need to get a transit yeah um and it worked <laughs> for a bit <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. But now it's operating on all the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> so what that's nice, what you've nicely, what Dave's nicely captured, you nicely captured there is you've got a routine. You know, you've got, you've thought about it, you've come up with a plan and you've got a little routine that you can keep repeating. Us as human beings are much, 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 uh, are much more effective when we are able to just press play on the file in our head that says start routine. And the more we repeat the same routine, the easier and easier, easier it becomes for us to have more bandwidth to do our stuff. Yeah. So when we are, we, our, our, our heads and our brains are like an internet connection to your house. Right? When you have your kids, your wife, and you, and you know, and the next door neighbor who's pinching a bit of your Wi Fi, all downloading something at the same time, what happens to the internet? grinds to a halt and stops working All right so um, and, and our brains are the same if it were his we have too much demand on the cognitive load that we're trying to trying to utilize i.e the the sorting and solving problems in the moment it's really difficult to try and attend to anything else obviously this there is his routine that allows him to go oh, i've got brain capacity to do this what do i need to do yeah and if you stick to the routine and you practice and you keep practicing and you develop the routine, that's what's going to give you the consistency that we're after. Because that's, that process obviously has worked, otherwise you wouldn't have mentioned it. And that process probably just needs a little bit of a, a kick to kickstart to get going again. Right? You've obviously done it. You've obviously worked out that there's something there that's pretty important. And, and, um, and in order to achieve this goal, actually it's probably about some practice before races. So instead of just, and, and I realize that Wednesday evenings is difficult because people work hard, they come down to the boat, whatever. But if you could be out on the water 10 minutes earlier. Well, Wednesdays is a bit pants because it's on the river. It's a yes. river start. So Sunday's yeah. on the... Bingo. Bingo. Out in the yeah. solar. Yeah. So, so could you, you know, in order, what do we need to achieve this goal? Well, we probably need to practice that really good routine you've developed and actually get your eye in so that when you come to do the detail of the off the line, you actually get an opportunity to verify your decision making and your skills. Yeah. yeah. So simply put, a little bit of practice, a little bit earlier than normal, to this routine you've already identified that it's the right thing is going to put you in a great place because all of a sudden if you go out and do two practice approach to the start line by the time you get to doing your start your brain and your body will be a bit more attuned you'll 
you'll realise that, oh, I'm too low for the ley line, the tyre's taking me across. Or, oh, there's a wind shift. You know, your brain won't be trying to remember the things you've got to do because you'd have practised it a couple of times and then you'll actually have had a chance to then be sitting there looking around rather than head stuck in the bottom of the boat trying to look at your piece of paper to remember what you were doing. That would suggest that I'd have to turn up earlier and not be last to launch every week. I mean, you know, if you get a high speed tow out from from somebody in their rip, then maybe you can be last to launch. But 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 um, but if not, then it, you know, it, I suppose my challenge to you is, if you're going to go out sailing on a Sunday and you want to achieve this goal that you spe- you've you've told us about, um, then what? what's worth putting what efforts worth putting in yeah <laughs> yeah exactly a lot of effort it's an expensive boat <laughs> <laughs> and don't tell the wife that um, <laughs> my biggest but, fear that if i die she sells it for what i told her it's worth <laughs> <laughs> so um so you know that um and in, in a lot of these things um you know probably we're just progressing down onto what actions do we need to take yeah so what actions do we need to take? Well, we've just talked around the fact that Henry's going to go out and um, and go and do a little bit of practice each time he goes out to start on a Sunday now. Um, Dude, can I make a mate. suggestion? Go on. For Henry, I'd, um, I'd cut quite a lot of decision-making process out. Stuff you can do at work before you go. So you can know what the tide's going to do. You can know what the wind's going to do uh, To in terms of forecast. So you can try and cut some of those bits out of the, your decision making process before you actually get on the boat itself you can do that at yeah. work Good while nobody's work. looking <laughs> <laughs> i love you work rory thanks for that <laughs> no one's so, looking anyway because i'm just like <laughs> stuck in the spare bedroom <laughs> no what no, no one's looking at rory because he owns the bloody company so <laughs> <laughs> um rory in your in your uh, expo um, what um, what starting drills might you use to try and help work on some of the things that uh, that Henry's mentioned? So for for us, I'm normally pretty good at winning an end, um, which at Limington seems to work quite a lot because if you win an end, you tend to win the start and off you go on your merry way. Um, at Cow's Week, that doesn't really work for us because situations change pretty fast and you have to be able to dive to one end or the other um, and unfortunately for cows week for us we get a lot of uh, either everybody's completely hanging back or everybody's completely sending it over it, there's no halfway house for us so but for Henry it's just try and practice winning an end first and then get your routines for winning the starboard end win the port end and then the middle bit gets harder I guess you <laughs> Yeah, you know, obviously winning ends is uh, more definite, isn't it? You know, winning ends is a routine. You uh, And one of the things I always advocate to my Olympic sailors is, is, you know, your start routine should include some practice approaches, which is kind of what we're saying to, to Henry here. You know, so part of their starting routine, uh, their preparation pre-race is uh, go and check the bias, check the ley lines to the starboard end, the port end, and then do three practice accelerations, three trigger pull accelerations to the line at least before you then go and do your last bias check. Because especially in, in Limington, when you've got tide against you or tide under you or whatever, it's super difficult for you to try and gauge that slow speed to up to pace approach to the start line. And, you know, what we do know scientifically is your body is bloody good at actually working some of that stuff out. It just needs the practice um, and, and it just needs that familiarity. And, you know, as you said, Rory, you know, you're good at starting at starboard end. Why? Probably because you've done it a lot more than the people around you and you're just happier and more confident in that zone. Um, and, that, you know, you know, because you've done it a lot, that you're going to come in there and you kind of, your judgment's all a bit, bit more zoned in than other people. And other people are a bit more stand backish and not quite as committed, whereas your confidence is up. And I suppose that's what I'm hoping that this this process we're doing here gives Henry is like, right, if I be specific on my starts because I want to, you know, have a better result at the nationals, then uh, and I and I commit to doing 
you know, trying to be successful three out of four times. And I, that means I go out and I do a little bit of practice before, before long, we'll be hearing the next time we have a chat, Henry's like, you know, lads, you know, actually now I'm looking at this piece of detail rather than kind of the big picture of how do I get better at this? It will be, how do I position myself specifically for this scenario when somebody comes in to attack me? Um, and, 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 and like that, look at it like that. So, so Henry, what actions are we going to take? Or what's your commitment? What's the commitment you're going to share with us that helps us help you? Uh, get there earlier. Copy. And, um, and, and do those three practice starts. Yeah. And also, also I don't practice at all. I turn up for races and so I don't ever practice. And when I did practice, when we had someone come to the club and we'd done like, I don't know, 12 starts or something, A, I was completely knackered. And B, um, my ne the next real start I'd done was so much better. So yeah. trying, to, trying to arrange a practice session where I can have a line somewhere with someone blowing a whistle which and, I think um, probably as a club, I don't know. I know that the arrows go off and do it, but um, I know for me, I don't, you know, I just don't do enough of that sort of stuff. Henry, I, in the arrows, quite often, you know, when Pete or the others aren't around, I go out and I'll just find a mark I can set up again. I'm practicing holding my boat, you know, on that boy for as long as I can before I lose control. And I know, you know, I'm sure the laser sailors do the same thing as well. It's because um, then you can hold your position on the line. You feel more confident holding your position on the line. So you yeah, can just... I do, I, and I do do that, but just not, not a lot, not very often. I don't go to go training. I go to go racing. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose um, one of the little opportunities might be that, you know, if you, know, you, you yourself and Nigel sail the Phantom, right? Yeah. And and who else? Stephen Homewood's got one. Stephen Homewood. So maybe there's just a little opportunity. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Dave and Carl and 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 Pete, uh, the Aero Massive, they just uh, they just go, oh, how about it? Are you free? And Rory, you know, I mean, I don't know how much the the exports. I mean, the the exports obviously stay every day of the week, but so it's a bit easier. But. <laughs> <laughs> For a little, for a little bit of uh, you know, being, being the um, uh, the, igni the igniter of some passion to do a little bit of uh, a little bit more is quite a good way of helping bring some of your mates along. So maybe there's just a little opportunity to harness some of the others who sell your class, or even you know, if you think that the Merlins are good, the Merlins are always keen. I'm pretty sure Gareth will go and do some starting practice with you. Definitely. Where is he? Definitely. Yeah, one of the yeah. nice opportunities that we've obviously gone into here is that is that people people at the club are all kind of of a similar ilk and keen to sort of help and support. So you know, mate, the reason I said Tony that I was keen to try and help with doing these sessions is because I think there's a massive the amount that could be gained from us all having a bit more of a community supporting each other thing, and and actually some of what you've spoken about here this evening, Harry, is is fantastic and really great to hear you sort of open up and and you know put yourself a little bit vulnerable to, to try and provide some opportunities for us to help but actually so hopefully out of it's come some yeah gareth can help maybe talk to some others and we've got some real positivity there that's that's because the last national was my my uh, my performance was appalling it was absolutely awful and i don't do too badly in club races, I turned up to the nationals and just went down a hole and was really disappointed. But I mean, it was the first one for 10 years, but I thought I was sailing better than ever and I just didn't perform. And, and that's, always a, that's always a tough one. Maybe I can just try and help a little bit um, just, just as we wrap up Henry's one by bringing us back to this, um, this, little, um, this little thing here. So, so for your nationals, uh, and this is taken a little example from, from Davey, Ellis and Carl, Carl Thorne here, um, and Dave, hopefully you can help us a little bit, but you know, for your, for your event um, at your nationals, Henry, you know, we could easily quickly now do a little simple version of this, right? So um, what it takes to win is making sure, and for Carl and Dave, it was winning the Scorpion Nationals, right? That's their goal for this year. Um, so Henry, what would be a reasonable 
uh, a stretch goal for you for the Nationals? Uh, fifth, top five. Fifth. Yeah. All right. So in order for us, and then, you know, and, then, and then we'd spend a bit more time doing this, but in order for the top five at that event, then we could do the maths and what the average points were. So then you could start giving yourself some, some, some targets to work to. Yeah. And maybe that means if we want to be top five of the, of the, of the Phantom Nationals, then we're like, oh, well, actually, I um, might want to go and do an open meeting here and there to get a benchmark what other people are doing and a benchmark against the competition I'll see at the Nationals. Because as you said, it's really hard when you think you're doing well at home and you go to somewhere else, which isn't quite so tired or a different situation. And actually, you're not really, you know, you're not quite as much in your comfort zone. So, and, and, and what and then happens is, and a little bit to talking to Rory's point, Really good start in the start and the starboard end and the port end in Limington, go to Cow's Week, and then you have to start in the middle of the line. Oh, mate. All right. So what does that mean? That means you go and go, you go and do a little regatta somewhere else. So you practice starting on a long line in the middle of the line somewhere. You might go to pool and do pool regatta, or you might go somewhere else for Rory and go and do a regatta up in, I don't know, where uh, in Itchino or something and sail in a venue it's got a different style and a different set of parameters that pulls out the, your need to address the thing that you need to get better at. Yeah. So maybe there's just a, li a little plan of action for your for Henry's campaign towards the national sphere that says, yeah, I'm going to sail at the club. I'm going to commit to doing the things we just said about the starting, but actually I'm also going to go and look at training, training with the guys I can train with a little bit you no know, it could be quite good fun get a good bit of banter might be able to enthuse him to go to the nationals and then i might go and do an open meeting so i check in so i don't turn up at the nationals green of knowing where i'm at on the international scale and not knowing what i'm expecting what do you think yes yeah, sounds good yeah so um so um, um I'm, I'm i'm aware of time and i'd really like to um i'd really like to just um, look at one other uh, one other goal that we had mentioned to us. Um, so Catherine, could I pick on you briefly? Um, so Catherine said top 10 and top lady at the Scorpion Nationals. Right. Um, so Catherine, are you able to unmute and say hello? Hello. Hello. But so um, kind of what I've got on the screen in front of us is a little bit of a blueprint that might help you a little bit because this is kind of what has a, a lit up until kind of this area is sort of what um, Carl and Dave and I've been working on for their Scorpion Nationals target. Um, so being the top 10 at the score Nationals and being a uh, top lady, mm -hmm. then um, that's obviously in our top bit here. Yeah. How do we, how, how are we going to try and help you break that down what are the opportunities where are the areas of improvement that we need in order to be able to do that that kind of falls down into this how to bit what areas do we need to work on to try and help you make sure you are top 10 uh, for me there's a big fitness thing um, so i'm i'm sailing with another lady which is quite it's not unusual but it's different um, and we are small and light so we are working quite hard on fitness um, just to be able to perform for longer for the whole regatta <laughs> when it's really cool. windy. Great. Um, so it would I, if I am back on to my presentation, so what's your performance question? Obviously it's fitness orientated, but what's the specific thing that you need to be able to deliver to be able to be top 10 at the nationals and first lady? In fitness. Sorry, say that again. You did a bit of a breakup. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. I'll just stop my video. It'll be a bit easier. So, if we look at this performance question, yeah, for you, for winning the top ladies uh, opportunity and being top ten at the nationals, and I would suggest that you probably will be dissatisfied more if you are not top ten at the nationals. Yeah, that right? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, in order to be top ten at the nationals what is the fitness question we need to answer and let me make uh, 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 yeah what's the fitness question we need to answer what how fit do you need to be uh to survive basically a, f a windy super windy nationals week okay how many races uh 12 i think okay so 12 races 
Yep. How long's the race? An hour and a half tops. Okay, 90 minutes. Uh, how many laps? Uh, three, I would say. So three laps, triangle, sausage, triangle? Yeah. Okay, so half an hour lap. Yeah. Of which first, first up win is 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, 10. So let's, so let's say it's 15 minutes. But, yep. So in order to be top 10 at the Nationals, in fitness terms, you need to be able to hike upwind for 15 minutes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, at, at a level that is equivalent to the top 10 out of anybody um, in, the, in, in, in the fleet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you need to be able to do that. Uh, uh, so it's a windy week, so it's two races a day, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to do. Uh, you've got to do. Uh, you've got to do an hour. Uh, so you have an hour and a half of upwind hiking each day for six days. Yeah. Which, when you break that down, yeah, when you break that down into what that actually means is, <clears throat> in order to be top ten um, at the at overall, you probably need to finish somewhere in the region of an average of like. 12th to 15th yeah which probably means that you need to um finish uh you need to be rounding the top mark in around about 15th each time yeah, yeah the, which yeah. means which means that as you come off the start line you probably need to be able to be in the front you need to be able to have a good lane on port as you come across the middle of the race course yeah which and means that yeah, it's it's the extra bit as well, isn't it? I don't, I don't do going backwards, so I go forwards in the fleet. I don't. So for me, it's getting that performance right where yeah, you go top fifteen round a mark, but I'm not going back from fifteen. I'm getting stronger from fifteen. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, for yeah. fitness. So level, you do. So what like, we're aiming for. You Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, you want to be day one is similar to day four, day five is to day five or day six. Yeah. You don't want to be getting to day five and like have nothing left in the tank. No. So it's a strength endurance thing. So yeah. my my reason for breaking it all down like that is because the performance question is, um, is <clears throat> so we need to be fit enough to race the last race at X percent, uh, at X, uh, at, at, as the same, ideally, the same as we race the first race. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we then get even more specific, we need to probably, if we break down the fact that you're 50, 10 to 15 minute upwind, if we, say it, if we say it's 15 minutes, that probably, in a way, keep it super simple. That means we've got a seven minute starb attack and a seven minute court attack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which basically means that in order to be in the front row, when you come to tack out the corner, you got to be one of the top. You got to, you know, you got to be in the front row, haven't you? So it probably means you need to be able to hike and hold your lane all the way to the corner and be in the top five in your corner or yeah. top top seven in your corner coming out of that side. Yeah. yeah. So it probably means that you both need to be able to hike the boat uh, and and hold that hike for somewhere in excess of five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And that starts our target. Okay. So how fast, how hard can we hike right now? And how long can we hold a hike for now off the start line? And then we just incrementally get work on the fitness and see how we, um, how we're improving. Yeah. Yeah. So might I suggest our starting, our, our, our goal here for mm. this opportunity is a fitness goal that relates into a lane hold off the start line. To try and keep it super simple. How does that sound? Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. And we can and we correlate that over time to an improving target of of ability to hold a lane for greater and greater minutes. Yeah. yeah. And how do we know we've succeeded? We know we succeeded in the second box down. And how do we track progress? Well, because 
on whenever you get to go sailing again, you come off the start line and you try and do a max max hiking hold for as long as you can. Yeah. And you time it. And the next time you go out, having done more fitness training and improved and got better nutrition and, and all those things, you go and see what your time is for the next time. Mm. And over time, you know, we start setting you little goals that over time bring you confidence, verify that you're improving your fitness, such that come the time you get to the nationals, we know that you can hold to the left hand corner or the right hand corner as well as you possibly can do, which hopefully is a target of about five minutes or so, because yeah. you know, trying to hike for seven minutes to a corner is pretty hard, hard, hard gear. I'd, I'd struggle to know anybody could hike full flat chat for that long. Yeah. Um, to, to look and work to our next box, how do we need, um, what do we need to achieve this? Um, I, well, it's kind of what, yeah, what I'm doing really, a, a bit of a fitness plan. Uh, and, and how do we, and, and um, so you've got a fitness plan. Yeah. Have, you, uh, have you done a, like a fitness test or an assessment of kind of where you are? so that you can then set some targets of how to try and improve? No, I haven't, but yeah, yeah, that's kind of probably where I need to go. Yeah. So once you have a benchmark, and that's yeah. in, in, our, in my next talk with us, we're then going to, we're going to go into some profiling so that people know how, you know, we've obviously kind of gone through that with Henry and, and yourself a little bit here, but profiling is a really important way of us trying to assess performance so we can then build a different build on the gap that we have between where we are now and where we want to be at the nationals mm. where we want to be at the nationals is an ability to do a five minute hold but what we yeah. definitely need to know is where we are now yeah yeah, yeah. And once we know where we are now then we can start saying okay and that's why i suggested that our first thing would be to go sail off the start and hold as long as you could with mm. the right posture and the right sort of speed and everything and measure the time because then we can start making yeah a benchmark of what was in the water to what you have as doing your fitness training and start making progress towards that mm. sure. the key to this and the actions piece and the commitment so henry's commitment was um three practice starts arrive early um uh pre practice starts arrive early and make sure he goes and does the practice mm what's what's the commitment that you're going to make to this fitness goal or what have you made to this fitness goal? i'm doing three or four sessions a week i think really i need to go back a stage and just measure a benchmark so i actually because I, I know i'm getting stronger yeah i do know that but it would be good to have something to measure it against so i think that's where cool. i need to go awesome that's great i mean we all need to see improvement. And that's kind of, if I, I sort of just try and wrap up now, that's basically where it, this whole, um, what it takes to win piece of thinking is about, you know, we're taking a super high level dream goal, you know, and going, okay, if that's the dream goal, how are we gonna get there? Um, and as you can see, as you go down further down, you put more detail into the, the possibility and then you kind of come down into, uh, you know, and here, if we talk what Catherine's just said, um, critical success factors. Yeah, the underpinning, one of the underpinning pillars of achieving this goal is physically fit, fit for purpose. Yeah, so within that space, Catherine can talk to, I need to be able to deliver X number of minutes hold off the start line. And I need to be able to do it for six days out of six. That starts to be really clear and really crystal of where and who you need to look like in the end. And then once you've done your benchmark, then it's just a case of problem solving the gaps and creating a little incremental gains each time you go on the water that helps you gradually, gradually, gradually get closer and closer, closer to your end goal. And, and the, the improvement and the benefit of that little incremental gains aggregating over time is what a will deliver you to your goal but b deliver you super super confidence um let me just um i was just gonna wrap up with a video but the the, the video won't play it was a video of um 
uh, of the last race um, of the of Ineos against Prada Pirelli. Um, and the reason for showing that is because I was going to lead on to saying, okay, those in the space we've just went through, um, oops, uh, in the space that we have a goal that we're trying to work on and we have a, a set of parameters that we're trying to get to. Um, right now, for Ineos, they've got to win the next seven races. And they're doing exactly what we just ran through here of going, okay, in order to win the next seven races, what have I got to do? What are my super strengths I need to bring to play? How am I going to do it? And what are the critical success factors that are going to underpin delivering that performance? So what it takes to win is all about taking a really high level, big picture goal and breaking it down into tiny little chunks that every day in a, in a nice confidence spending way you can work on to get closer to that ultimate goal. I've taken uh, a little bit more uh, time, but on the basis that I started late, hopefully that's acceptable. It's very acceptable here, yeah. Thanks very much. Can I just check? Um, there's been a lot, lot of references to goals there. How much have you drank, Pete? <laughs> Quite a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fingers. <laughs> uh, Hugh, thanks so much for that. Um, just so you know, my specific goal is to lose six kilograms and start sailing again, by the way. So that's just a... Uh, it's, uh, oh, well, you, we all heard it here. It's we can help you, yeah, you to account. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I think I might follow uh, Catherine's, uh, Catherine's benchmarking uh, lead. I think that's what I need to do. <laughs> so I'll do that. Um, so you need to get off to your uh, Rioja and your tapas, don't you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but I, I just before I do, um, so Tony's asked me to do, um, do a number of these. Um, I need some feedback, guys. So uh, obviously we've had we've had twenty we've had twenty five plus people on the call tonight. Um, give me some feedback. How was it? What was good? What needs to be changed? What what uh, what would you like? More of, less of? Don't all jump at once. Uh, some some broadband is probably what we need as well. You just as a uh... <laughs> <laughs> next week I'll be at home, so hopefully there you that go. should there be you fine. Go. Kids will be involved as well. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll make sure we do that. I'll. Uh, I've got. Uh, I've captured who's on the list now. So I'll. I'll uh, so do do throw your feedback in. You know, because we've got a series of these. So you know, any ideas, any thoughts? Do let us know. Okay. So that'd be really cool. So and if you could just, uh, if there's no more questions, just take yourself off mute and say uh, thank you to Hugh Styles. And that's all we uh, all we can end up with. Thanks very much, Hugh. Cheers, Hugh. Thanks, Hugh. Thank you. Cheers, Hugh. Thanks, no worries, guys. Thanks, 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 um, that was awesome. I am. Um, I, all I have to say is, um, so next week my plan was to kind of um, go. If you are all still got a half interest, was go back to this slide back here, this one here, um, and kind of we sort of I've, I've shown you the what it takes to win as a template. Um, uh, as a way and, and then use that questioning as a way of kind of breaking down some opportunities. Um, next week, my plan was to just work, work through a little bit of benchmarking. Yeah, through using a performance profile to try and give you guys an idea about how to assess your performance. So you can then go across all these areas. This is where I am, which allows you to then go, oh, I didn't realize this is something I need to work on or I am strong there. I'm going to work on it as a super strength. So if that sounds good, then that's what I plan to do. Perfect. Gareth, can I just ask, have we got, when's John Doe? Uh, is that the 22nd? It, you, you told me to book him in for the 22nd, yeah. I did, you're right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so I thought I did. Um, Tony, can we can we start another LTSC YouTube channel? Maybe we can do um, another thing with Hugh on the same night as maybe the knitting or yoga that maybe some people aren't doing or something. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't been doing the knitting and the yoga all at the same time. Your mum said you were crap at this. Wait, there's at... knitting? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm out. Knitting. You're worse at knitting than your dad said you were at woodwork. <laughs> oh, that's unfair. <laughs>
Uh, so okay, uh, so so Hugh, is it uh, is it the week after? Is that okay? Uh, just as a uh, um, yeah, I can I can do the week after. That's fine. Super. And just a, a heads up in advance on the twenty seventh, there's a small match of uh, England versus Wales, um, and uh, at four, four o'clock, um, just before the kickoff, there's going to be an England against Wales uh, question of sport on Zoom with uh, a couple of teams and a couple of characters from uh, from the club. So there'll be more more news <laughs> coming out. Uh, myself and Richard Lilly as the uh, as the host of that as well. So, uh, oh, marvellous! Well, that's great. Nice to see international face. Bias then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to see you all. all right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody, for contributing. Nice no, to see you. Thank you.